After spending four and a half years living on our narrowboat and cruising the canal system, you now join us about six weeks into our narrowboat's renovation. If you watched our last video, you'll already know that this renovation project is getting a little out of hand. Originally, we were only planning on doing a couple of small jobs on the boat, but the project has escalated somewhat, and we've just cut a huge hole in our kitchen floor to get rid of some rotting wood. When we removed the wood, we found that there was some water in our bilge. Not what you want to find on a narrowboat. We pumped out as much water as we could, and then we left the bilge dry overnight. We've come back to the boat to see how it's getting on. So yesterday Andrew did the big cutout, uh, cutting, he used a, a rotary saw to cut in to the plywood most of the way through, uh, taking a depth measurement off of the old piece of plywood, and then we essentially used a multi-tool to go through and cut out the edges and then that let us actually pull out um, what is now the template for the replacement and um, yeah we've had this dehumidifier this is where we're really lucky uh, Andrew's work involves a dehumidifier being available so we've got this dehumidifier that's been running and uh, we've pretty much dried out the vast majority of the space down here now so we pumped out the water yesterday that we could, sucked out the rest with the water with a um, sucked out the rest with the wet back, and now we've been having the dehumidifier running overnight, and that's done a pretty good job of drying this out. We're gonna let it keep going for a little bit more. Then we're gonna have to move all of that crud out of there, vacuum it all up, um, and consider doing probably red oxide layer on there just to make sure that everything's patched up. Um, and protected from future rust. We got lucky because, well, Liverpool boats in their steel work, they did actually a really quite good job where we have baffles uh, about every four feet, um, three and a half feet, something like that. And, uh, and essentially there's a steel beam that goes across the bottom and then there's a bit of wood on top of that that the plywood sits the top. And unlike what I've seen on some boats, that steel baffle goes all the way across the hull and is welded down at the ends and all the way along its length. So essentially, we've got the same design as the Titanic. Um, we've got multiple waterproof compartments so that if water gets in to this baffle, it will fill to the level of that steel beam before it has to go over. This area, we did see some damage where, you know, water had been soaking in for quite a while, but the area that was damaged, it just happened to be where the two angles of our counter met and where the water would pool. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it caused the damage, but it didn't get through to, you know, it didn't get to the point where it flooded up to the point where it was saturating over the steel beams, which would cause the next panel to break. So basically we just ended up with sort of the center of a piece of plywood that has um, rotted out, but at the edges, we've got a nice solid piece of metal, a nice solid piece of metal, and when we've cut it back, we've got clean wood that hasn't got water damage out to those edges. So we're, we're basically just lucky. Um, the nice thing about that is it means that we've actually got two supports. So all we do is we cut out a replacement piece and it'll just drop straight in, uh, and seal it up and we're ready to go. This is actual marine ply which is quite expensive, but they used it properly for the base board of the boat. It's not cheap plywood. So um, when you lift it up, the, the underside of it has a waterproof paint on it and everything. It's on top of steel, which has been welded all the way around the edges. So we get nice waterproof sections and where the steel was exposed, it's not exposed steel. They've taken steel and they've put down probably a bilge paint or something or blacking um, to make it so that there's not direct access of water to the uh, to the steel so we don't have like a lot of flaking rust or anything. Uh, I've seen mean, boats where it's been a much worse design yeah. and uh, and when they've lifted something like this up they've found you know sheets of rust. We've got nothing. We've got no rust that's even visible. So the, the hole in the floor is bad but it kind of reassures us that what's underneath is pretty It's still really intact and yeah like they 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 engineered the exterior portions, the water facing portions of Liverpool boats' boats were well done. Their interior work was relatively well done. Um, 
it's at the electrics and some of the fine points of carpentry and plumbing that you run into. Here's where some corners were cut and we lead to, you know, places where over 20 years, um, with quite heavy, da you know, usage over the last four years, we've, we've had some breakdowns in, in, you know, what was originally there. But honestly, for 20 years, it's in remarkably good condition. So we, we did, we got lucky. So now Michael is off to the workshop with Andrew to cut out the template. No, the replacement bit of wood, and I'm going to the tip with the rest of the old kitchen. Yeah. We should get on. Okay. So I've just dropped Michael off over at the workshop so that he can cut out the new bit of floorboard that's going to go in the kitchen. Um, he's also making uh, two bits of board to go underneath the bow where we're going to sit the uh, pressure pump and the accumulator on uh, the right hand side, the left hand side. <laughs> Um, and we're also going to put, do the same on the left hand side even though there's nothing going out there down there at the moment um, it just makes sense for there to be a board there in case we use it for anything um, also we've decided that while it's empty under the bow um, we should probably give it a coat of bilge paint or locker paint um, it's in really good condition under there obviously it was painted when the boat was built um, there's not really any rust, there's a little bit of like deterioration in the paint, but not too bad at all. But while it's empty and while we're doing all this work, we should probably just give it a coat of paint. Um, so we need to do that now before the accumulator and the pump get fitted. Um, and I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm just going to clean it out, hoover it out, because there's quite a few spider shells, like spider carcasses, previous spiders, um, ex-spiders. <laughs> under there and a bit of like uh, dust, quite a bit of dust. Um, so get rid of anything that's loose in there and um, just prepare it for the, the paint. Um, uh, the only complication is there's some plumbing down there which takes the water from the tank uh, under the bow uh, into the boat um, and that's just on a bit of um, deck board, buffalo board. Uh, so and the plumbing is like pinned down to it so I'm not sure whether to try and take that plumbing off and uh, move that board out so I can paint underneath it or whether just to leave that where it is. I'm thinking I'll probably leave it where it is. Um, it doesn't really make sense to disturb it but yeah that's where we are. I'll show you what the current situation is in the locker. So this is what's behind our steps, it's just a hole um, and obviously the steps cover that up. Um, there's this bit of board which is just loose, it's like a step that's been put in there and then you lift that up, um, I probably shouldn't have it resting on the pipe but what we've got here is the, uh, the pipe coming out from the, the tank and then this stops, this is like the main kind of cut off point for the whole water system so really useful to note that's there and then this here is like a pressure valve that shows us how much we've got water, how much water we've got left in the tank. Um, so there's obviously a display uh, in the boat uh, that reads off there. So that's pretty useful to have. Um, and that's what the light, the wires coming off it uh, go to. Over there, we've got uh, the wires that go down to the bow thruster. Uh, so they're just over in that corner. Uh, this corner, I've got a light at the moment. Just shine that the other way. And uh, yeah, that's the plumbing going into the boat. And then, yeah, so it's not, the paint's not too bad, uh, but it just does make sense to give it a coat while we're under here. Uh, and then obviously that pipe there behind this board is our bow thruster. Okay, so I have got rid of all, well, some of the dust. And there's some rust spots down there. So I'm just gonna go over it with the wire brush to uh, get rid of anything that's loose before I paint. Um, also, Michael was talking about cutting this an inch or so higher because our stairs, I think they come up to about, yeah, they come up to about here. So if we could, if we could cut this section out, there will be a much bigger hole to squeeze through. So I might wait to paint till we've done that, but um, I'll see how I get on doing the wire brushing and then make a decision from there. This is really not a fun job, mainly because I've had to squeeze my body into the most uncomfortable positions to try and reach all the rust.
so I ended up using three cushions in there because it's uncomfortable trying to bend your body through the hole to do the scraping but I've got most of the loose bits off you can't tell but yeah that was a good hour scraping all the rust off Meanwhile, over in the workshop, Michael and Andrew are using the piece we removed from our kitchen as a template to cut a new piece of floor. That way it should drop straight into the hole. It's like the archaeology project on the Mary Rose, but just not quite as bad. After marking out the new marine ply, they use the track saw to make the cuts. They also cut out the pieces for under the well deck so the accumulator and pump can be moved under there. Once the well deck pieces are the right size, Michael takes off the sharp edges with a router. Michael's back from the workshop and he's going to cut the hole a little bit bigger. We've measured it up against the stairs, so this should be good. And I think that is going to make all the difference. We just used the blade on the Dremel to make the cut because this ply is only about six millimetres thick. So there's the new bit of floor on that side and it fits perfectly and then on the other side the template must have been a bit big because it's uh, not dropping down by a millimetre or so so that one needs trimming down but they work pretty well uh, so yeah that's good there we go trimmed a bit off now it fits so now we've got a full platform it goes all the way across, albeit of different materials. So Michael's just done a layer of varnish on the two panels that are going in the underneath the well deck and they'll get painted on the other side and they'll go on top of steel that's painted so yeah, it's just so a little extra these are actually the bottom and they'll go against the steel that's got um bilge paint on it and then they'll be fixed down with some fix all uh silicon adhesive stick all or uh, something probably stick all which is a silicon adhesive um so really the varnish is just acting as a as a uh, sort of last line of defense because it's marine ply ply it is, so it's, it's, fine. yeah it's actual marine ply um we thought we'd do it with regular plywood but it turned out that andrew uh had some offcuts of marine ply so bonus yeah. okay let's call it morning it's the next day now the varnish has dried so i'm gonna put a second coat on uh because it's quite quick drying and we've got time so First job of the day. So second coat done, looking good. And just a little <laughs> secret, they're actually propped up on some choir bricks from our separator toilet, <laughs> just to get them off the surface. <sighs> we didn't actually have the dehumidifier running last night because uh, we were charging the other boat. 
but it's doing good. I cleaned out the wood that was in there and took out that ballast uh, that I just got stacked up there. Uh, I'll probably go back in, but yeah, drying out nicely. Morning. Morning. Uh, day N plus one. Um, so <laughs> we are doing kind of a patch up day, but there's a bunch of little work, little jobs they need to be doing. Um, Joe wants to paint the inside of the bow locker. No, that's not the right word. The, the inside of the well deck where we had our water feed going through and where our bow thruster is. Um, we've made some panels to go inside of there where we're going to move the pressure pump and the um, accumulator. And um, that will either be this pressure pump or it will be a replacement for this pressure pump because I don't really trust this pressure pump anymore because we had a leak under it. Um, although it might not be the pressure pump's problem, but I still don't trust it anyway. What I need to do right now though, in order to make it so that Joe can do that job, is to empty our water tank of all of the water inside of it. And the only way I can do that is by using the pump at the lowest point down there where the fresh water feed comes through to shove the water out uh, the window. So I'm going to jury rig a connection to do that. And we're draining our tank. Draining the fresh water tank of all remaining water inside of it. Okay. Nice. Good fun. So we've got the pump rigged up there and we're just about to fire it up. Well, I'm like just going to plug it in and then fire it up before we turn the water back on. And it just comes up this pipe here and out the window past the spider. Okay, we're switching on the pump. Yeah. Okay, off. Okay, so the pump's working. So give it another, say, 15 seconds and then turn it off for a bit. Turn off the pump? Yeah. Not the water feed, the pump. I do have some dripping going on here. Do we turn the water off? Yeah, turn the water off. Okay. Then run the pump again. seconds and that noise is the reason that we want to move it to under the well deck because it's quite noisy another job that we need to finish today is the removal of the old boxing in so that we can install the new plumbing unfortunately this involves rearranging all of the clutter on the boat all right, so that's the cold water tank. This is the feed out of the cold water tank, which we've tried to drain everything. I've got to cut it and stopper it. And hopefully it doesn't shoot a bunch of water out of me. All right, Joe, start the pump. Okay, good. Pretty good. Um, I'm gonna break the other connection. If you can grab me a screwdriver with a PZ2 bit, I can get these out and then I'll break that other connection and then we're good, I can get it out.
just took out the board and there's a little bit of rust down there and at the back there so I'll give it a quick brush then I can wipe it down and then just give it a quick coat of bilge paint uh, ready for tomorrow. I should mention that it's 6.30 at night and it's dark outside and I don't want to be doing this. But I'm going to. I didn't actually end up painting the bilge because I realised that I needed to treat the rust spots first. I used a rust converter under the well deck but I was far too tired to film any of it. I then ended up cleaning and painting the inside of what will be the kitchen units to give us a clean surface to mount the new plumbing on. Just finished for the night, one coat of undercoat. <sighs> Second coat will go on in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> 